Hello and welcome to In Conversation with Rashmi. Today's guest, he has completed his film studies at New York University and is a cinematographer and has worked in several short films. He's also an actor who's performed in many different roles in many different languages and was awarded the Kodak Cinematography Gold Award Scholarship in 2014 and the 2013 Best Cinematography Award in the first run film festival organized by the New York University. So it is my pleasure and honor to have Balaji Manohar as my guest for today's conversation. Thank you so much Balaji for being a part of this conversation today. It's a pleasure having you here today. Thank you for having me in this uh, program, Rashmi. Thank you so much. Take me back to a time where, you know, uh, you started as an assistant director way back in 2001, and then your journey into cinematography and then uh, getting into acting. Um, actually, uh, uh, my uh, relationship with arts began in college, in the final year of uh, my college in 1999, when I started doing theater. In college and post college, I joined several theater teams uh, in Bangalore as an amateur uh, actor. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, what the best thing I liked about uh, doing theater is uh, we get to touch upon various other aspects apart from just acting. Mm -hmm. So I was assisting the directors there, I was part of the lighting team, the sound team, the set, and the art team. So that fascinated me where it was not limiting. Uh, and uh, it was a chance that you know, I got uh, cast as an actor because an, an actor didn't turn up for a rehearsal and the director said, why don't you read the part? And I said, okay, I'll read the part. And then I was cast without, <laughs> without my knowledge. He said, okay, you're doing the part. I said, okay, I'll do it. So that's how it was. It was not uh, acting focused mm -hmm. for me ever. Okay. And then over the years, uh, uh, I was part of a team called Two Streams Media, which was run by Prakash Balwadi. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did a television serial called Garva in Canada. And it was a very contemporary uh, television serial uh, for those times. We ran around 20, 202 episodes or something. And after that, we did a movie called Stumble about the Y2K uh, collapse and uh, mm -hmm. about about the uh, about the city story where everyone you knew uh, at least uh, two or three among the five friends we had used to get uh, uh, the pink slip every other week during that time and it was a very interesting uh, uh, feature mm -hmm. so because IT was very new to India during that time. Yeah. And uh, yes, I doubled up as an actor as well in that feature. It was my first feature as an actor and also as an assistant director. And then I went on uh, pursuing my uh, uh, work uh, in theater and uh, I auditioned for Nagesh Kukunur's uh, Iqbal uh, while we were performing a play called Tughlaq written by Girish Karnar and directed by Arjun Sajnani in Hyderabad. And we heard about this uh, audition and then I auditioned and I got a part in that movie, Iqbal, and then Nagesh Kukunur again called me to work with him on, uh, uh, I think the first film was Hyderabad Blues Part 2. And then he called me again for Iqbal, and then he called me again to assist him in uh, Door, mm -hmm. a feature film uh, that featured uh, Aisha Takia and Gul Panag and was shot in uh, Rajasthan. <laughs> and then I, I pursued uh, a theater always. Mm -hmm. uh, because that was uh, something I was always uh, fascinated with and uh, simultaneously some filmmaking friends would uh, uh, call me for auditions and I started doing features but I was not very satisfied thoroughly because I never felt I was equipped. There was always, I was always running low on uh, pursuing film as a career because I was running low on uh, confidence that I, don't ha I haven't understood film pedagogically. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to enroll in a film school and luckily my wife pursued higher studies in Singapore at La Salle. She did her arts management mm -hmm. and I wanted to be with her somehow in <laughs> Singapore. And uh, my relative advised me that there's a film school in Singapore. Uh, but now it is shut. They've closed it. Uh, uh, New York University has a film branch called Tish School of the Arts. Okay. And they had a branch in uh, Asian branch in Singapore. It was called Tish Asia. Mm -hmm. 
So I applied and because of my 10 year uh, film experience, film and theater experience, I got in, I got a scholarship as well. And it was 2011 and I was uh, uh, conventionally speaking, uh, not at the age of going back to school, but I gave it a shot. I wanted to go back to school. I saw my peers who were just out of their uh, college and joined film school. They were very young and uh, there were uh, a lot of other students who were of my age and a little senior to me as well. That gave me hope. Actually, uh, that helped me a lot to look beyond uh, language culture mm. and culture uh, when it comes to arts. Otherwise, we were always focused and uh, maybe unidimensional in our story structures mm. when it came to Indian cinema, um, not seeing it from all other angles. And uh, basically, travel does that to you, I think, where you empathize, you become more compassionate about the other language cultures and other people. Other, when, when you travel to other countries. Mm -hmm. And then 13, you were awarded uh, the Best Cinematographer Craft Award. By the it was awarded by Kodak. So the Kodak uh, uh, runs this uh, uh, award, uh, allows uh, every film school across the world to submit uh, the best short films uh, from their university or their film school. Okay. And uh, I will, it was it was really truly an honor. It was an external validation. I never expected an award, and it was an it was a validation which said that I should pursue something technical apart from acting. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a skill. I, I I went to film school to de develop some skills. You know, okay. not just acting, but I wanted to uh, understand sound design. I wanted to understand editing, writing. So it was a whole package, and uh, we were. Uh, eating, drinking, sleeping, film for three years, <laughs> and it was literally three years. We were working sixteen hours, seventeen hours a day. Oh, Every okay. weekend, we were shooting at least five to six short films. Mm -hmm. And it so, does take a lot of hard work. Nothing comes easy, right? Like you have to no. work day in and day out trying yes. to pursue that art. Yes, uh, it uh, it doesn't become work if you're enjoying your work. If that is what you want to do. There is physical exhaustion, yes, mm -hmm. but not a mental exhaustion. Mm -hmm. that you may have, you may hit a blockade like I can't think creatively sometimes. That's just then we used to go play ping pong for some time or something. <laughs> that was a struggle. The struggle was not about whether I'm pursuing the right thing or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lately, your movies have been some wonderful ones, which you know I've got glimpses of as well. And it's not just bound to one particular language for you. You are open to Hindi, uh, you know, Telugu, Tamil, Kannada, which is, you know, the latest from what I know, your role in Avne Sri Manarayana is fabulous. You played a villain in that? Yes. Yes, so I did. Was that journey? So uh, when I came back from film school, I pursued uh, cinematography here. So new friends called me for cinematography work and old ones kept calling me for acting work. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was very skeptical about, about uh, just being an actor uh, because uh, I need something competent. Mm -hmm. I, I cannot sit on a set and say, this is an easy job. This character is easy for me. Mm -hmm. I'll just pull it off. No, I, 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 until now, touch wood, even COVID has not pushed me to become complacent when it comes to choosing the uh, stories or uh, the work. Mm -hmm. So uh, that way I was really extremely lucky when, um, actually it was Churi Katte before Avanesh Narana that uh, got me mm -hmm. a state award for best supporting actor. Mm -hmm. The Rakshit Shetty had seen that film and he called me to be a part of Avanesh Narana and I said, uh, sure, I'll do it. And, it was a very well-crafted, ambitious project. Mm -hmm. See, all the credit goes to him as well. Mm -hmm. And the team, the new team, uh, the new filmmakers are very collaborative when it comes to their work process. Mm -hmm. And that is something I truly love. It is not a result-oriented direction uh, that appeals to me, but a collaborative effort appeals to me. And uh, they crafted the story very well, and I had a, a lovely time on the set. So I... When I saw clips of your acting in that movie, it's a very powerful role. It's, do you have to practice voice modulation and things like that for roles like these? Yes, absolutely. We, 
I mean, uh, at least my process is to get the whole script beforehand. Mm -hmm. And then I will get familiar with the character. I see it. I look for a trait in the character that is familiar to me as an actor. Mm -hmm. So once I get that, then I just do further discussion with the director mm -hmm. as to what his vision is. And if you notice in Amaneshri Mannarana, the character is vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And not many villains are vulnerable, but there is a new trend now where even in Avengers, the Infinity Stone, you see Thanos vulnerable when he drops his daughter uh, down the cliff to get the stone mm -hmm. uh, because it demands uh, him to uh, uh, let go of his loved one to acquire a particular stone. So, and you see a teardrop rolling down his cheek and that is Thanos we are talking, the world's biggest villain. Yeah. So there is uh, a change in treatment and yes, we do get the whole script and then I rehearse it. And of course, uh, this was not sing sound. It was dubbed later. Mm -hmm. So that gives us an extra uh, liberty and uh, freedom to modulate much better. Like if we are really closer to the microphone mm -hmm. and uh, we, uh, I, I, we dub according to the shot. If it's a close and intimate uh, thing, unlike theater, we don't have to project it. Uh, for it to reach the uh, every audience member in the last row of the theater. We can really uh, reach the audience uh, through the camera. The camera plays a big role and the sound plays a big role and it, it becomes a craft that is very sensitive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have hit international theaters and platforms. So uh, how, how do you look at these kind of movies, the ones that you're doing and the industry itself uh, being promoted in international platforms? I think it's a, um, as I said uh, earlier, there was a plaza in Bangalore, yes. Plaza Theater, Galaxy, Rex. These were the theaters that played any foreign language film. Mm -hmm. And uh, mostly it was Hollywood that influenced Bangalore uh, movie culture. Uh, we never got to watch uh, uh, French cinema or a German film regularly, apart from film festivals. Mm -hmm. So that's another aspect that, that made me very interested in cinema is uh, attending film festivals in Bangalore. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was volunteering as well in the festivals and I got to watch a lot of cinema uh, there. So uh, unfortunately, the uh, normal audience on a large scale couldn't get access to uh, world cinema. But thanks to digital technology, the revolution, uh, you are in Ontario and I'm in Bangalore mm -hmm. and we are able to see each other and talk to each other. And we are able to see the cinema that releases in Ontario at 12.30 uh, noon, at 6.30 in, in Bangalore maybe. We just have to log in and watch it at the same time. So we are in tune with the idea of the film and also the, uh, with the content of the film and also the time of the film. Mm -hmm. Earlier, uh, we had to wait for three or four months for the content to come to India as a reel, uh, get distributed across the theaters and watch it. And it would all, already be um, outdated in a sense that, you know, we would be watching a cinema that was already released four months ago in the US. Mm -hmm. So that way, uh, digital uh, technology has helped us <laughs> to watch content from across the globe. And now during pandemic, people have woken up to web series and uh, they're hooked onto the television watching um, <laughs> yes. so, many, so many of the contents. And that uh, made them question why our content uh, isn't that competent compared to uh, other language cultures. Now, uh, that has upped the game in a, in a way in India, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a good change. It is a good change, absolutely. Now, talking about change and where things are on the digital front, let's go back a little to, you know, through COVID, the Indian cinema has also had quite a bit of backlash in regard to all the scandals that have happened, especially the drug scandals. And COVID seemed to have been the time where things just went haywire. So can you tell me a little, what's your take on that? Um, I don't know how people handle the Spanish flu mm -hmm. and there was a plague uh, that uh, attacked Bangalore early 1900. Mm -hmm. I don't know how people reacted to that, but I think the only focus then was to survive it. Mm -hmm. 
to come out of it, emerge out of it victoriously. So for me, uh, I'm in an art form or in an industry which is which doesn't come under the category of essentials or essential commodity. Mm -hmm. It's a luxury to practice art. It's medicine is essential, food is essential, and the roof over your head is, a, is the essentials. It comes under the essentials. So uh, about the drug scandal and other things, I found it funny that during a pandemic, mm -hmm. we were discussing drug abuse by individuals who are adults mm -hmm. who had the sense to take drugs. Mm -hmm. So it is their work and it is the job of the cops. Mm -hmm. So we had many other issues to address. Yeah. Um, and the only solace during uh, COVID is it hasn't happened only to us. The entire world is suffering. Mm -hmm. okay. So we have many people uh, uh, with us suffering what we are suffering. And that gives us a kind of a solace that, you know, okay, it's not just me who is suffering. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think COVID has taught us to uh, rethink what uh, we are doing mm -hmm. and what career is uh, uh, eternal or what career is uh, uh, better. We, we, we seriously don't know what is good. So at some point I was thinking whether I should learn some first aid. Uh, I should I should have been a doctor or a, um, a nurse, male nurse or something. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it brought in a lot of other questions. Even now we are in the middle of the pandemic. It's not, it's still not over. Of course, the vaccines are coming out, but we don't, we don't know mm -hmm. what's going to happen. Uh, but definitely this has changed the game. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it, it is heartening to see theaters shut down where live perf performances used to happen mm -hmm. and where uh, in our industry, we talk about human relationship, chemistry, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it requires for people to hold each other, hug each other, uh, touch each other, kiss each other. You know, it's a basic thing. Mm -hmm. And we cannot portray it under such circumstances. It's very risky. Mm -hmm. Some people are taking the necessary uh, precautions and doing it. But I think the future, uh, even the content of cinema, if we should be able to address the pandemic. I, I don't have the mindset now to watch a romantic flick, yeah. which ignores the pandemic completely. Mm -hmm. Where pandemic doesn't play a role. I'm a current filmmaker and I believe in uh, addressing the current issues that bother us around us mm -hmm. somewhere or the other. So yes, I think it is a game changer. We have to sit up and rethink about what content we're going to address hereafter. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we have to go out to Switzerland to just to shoot a song, we'll have to really think about it, whether we really require it. Mm -hmm. uh, or we use all the resources uh, and uh, uh, spend it uh, uh, economically and uh, make the most out of it and tell the most strong stories. And we should stop kidding ourselves. Film viewing uh, has changed. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, even to find a little community within the household is a challenge. Each one is on their own phones. <laughs> you know? really? so, yeah. So earlier film was used as a community experience. Mm -hmm. So we're going to miss out on that. Mm -hmm. If the pandemic continues and we don't uh, pay attention to cinema viewing in the com as a community activity mm -hmm. where uh, you see uh, 500 uh, people uh, watching the cinema, uh, uh, understanding or together relishing and enjoying the political aspects of that particular cinema mm -hmm. and coming out angry, sad, laughing. You know, sometimes you're confused with how I should feel after watching a movie and then you see your neighbor laughing, then you lighten up and you uh, imitate that or, you know, you get convinced and you start considering the film in a different way. So we're going to miss out a lot of other things like that. And I think as uh, small communities uh, who are living abroad, the Canada community or a Tamil community, I think they should also come together um, to watch an independent feature. Let's say they reach out to a director an independent film director. If there's a community of thousand people and they say, okay, why don't you send a screener to us, a private screener, and we're gonna uh, give you money to watch the film. Even that is one way of helping uh, young filmmakers and encouraging them. And uh, that will be very helpful. What's next for Balaji Manohar now? 
um, recently, another feature I shot, Arisha Dwarga is still playing in the theaters now. Mm -hmm. It was directed by Arvind Kamath. And that, that came out on 27th of uh, November and it's still in the theaters for an independent cinema to stay this long. This long, yeah. in disguise. Fantastic. Uh, it's unheard of. Mm -hmm. So uh, two filmmakers, Mansore and uh, Arvind Kamat decided to release their films, Act 1978, another Kannada feature. That was the first Kannada feature to release uh, once the theaters were open, this post-pandemic, not even post-pandemic, but during the pandemic. And uh, the next week, the following week, Arishad Varga, which I'm part of as a cinematographer, released. And we are still um, taking in uh, that celebration. We've not been able to celebrate the release exactly. Yeah. And it's been a very tough journey to expect a return on investment through theatrical release. We don't know whether it will happen or not. It's a mm -hmm. sad state of affair for an independent filmmaker. Um, for any other film. Other, the other filmmakers are holding back the release because uh, they don't want to risk the uh, public uh, by releasing their films during the pandemic. It's going to be very risky. So I, uh, in spite of all this, I've, I've, I've been working on other two features. One is BM Giriraj's uh, feature called Kannadiga. Um, and the other film is Avatar Purusha. It's mm -hmm. under uh, Pushkar Films, directed by Simple Suni. Mm -hmm. So I'm acting and I'm reading some scripts here and there. Uh, hopefully, yeah, the, the race has slowed down, definitely has slowed down. And well, those and aspiring to get into this industry and wanting to, you know, do cinematography or even acting or movies and things like that, with the current situation and state uh, and you know obviously i'm sure there's negative criticism going on at the same time and you know based on the movie releases and how things are there's both positive and negative to it so what's your advice or your feedback to aspiring youngsters who want to get into this line no i'm i'm too young to advise anyone <laughs> I can only share my experience. You if are you young, but I'm sure there are many <laughs> who follow you and admire you and look no. up to you. So, no, it, what I you mean, think? if that is true, I'm truly humbled if that is there. But uh, if you just go on YouTube and hear Martin Scorsese or, you know, any of your film, uh, favorite filmmakers, Christopher Nolan, they'll have a lot more to say about it because they dirty their hands not just with the creative aspect but also they make sure the film makes money the film is distributed they had they go through immense pressure from the studio to get the content right while filming i'm just an actor or maximum a, a cinematographer who hasn't handled that kind of an amount or money or something i can't be the spokesperson of what the future of cinema has to be but i can only give my two cents as to uh, uh, for uh, the young uh, filmmakers or aspiring uh, filmmakers who want to get in here. Mm -hmm. I think it's only the passion. Uh, it takes a certain kind of madness mm -hmm. and you have to be mad. And uh, passion is the key. Mm -hmm. uh, you should be able to uh, accommodate everyone. Art is something that you know you can't do without falling in love. Mm -hmm. You have to fall in love with everyone, ev the script, the team, so it is growing together. So uh, until unless you're not uh, accommodative of these ideas, it's going to be a difficult journey for you. It's going to be very lonely for you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and have patience. That is most important. Mm -hmm. uh, patience is required to position yourself in the industry uh, and attract a certain kind of uh, script that will that is aesthetically appealing and convincing to you. So you cannot force yourself just because there's money involved or just because there's a big banner involved. No, I think you, uh, for a more, first and most, what is important is opportunities. There are plenty of opportunities, but what do you actually want to do? How do you want to position yourself? What is the kind of cinema you want to uh, be a part of or endorse? That also, uh, or the content you want to endorse, that also matters. That's going to be the challenge going forward. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there is for each person looking up, you know, to take up different careers, there's someone behind them that inspires them or it's someone that they look up to for inspiration. So who's been your biggest inspiration in doing what you do? 
Um, I think uh, for me to pursue my career, to drive my career, the inspiration is my wife, Divya Raghuram. Mm -hmm. And she taught me uh, photography. And uh, uh, she's been the pillar of strength. She's always been that. And we were like uh, college sweethearts. <laughs> <Yeah. 95. laughs> We've known each other since 95. It wow. seems so long. We're married for 14 years now. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she's been the biggest strength, even in, when it comes to choosing the script. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so yeah, she's the one who comes to my mind. And now off late, I've started to look at myself in the mirror and see how do I position this man? Like, you know, where do we go from here? Mm -hmm. What do we need to do? And she's taught me that as well to uh, uh, hone my skills and like, you know, self love is important as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm the director of my own uh, life <laughs> if I see that from that that's on a personal note but apart from that there are plenty of filmmakers that have inspired me mm -hmm. uh, uh, Sidney Lumet or uh, uh, David Lean when it comes to the canvas of cinema and uh, Rishikesh Mukherjee here yeah. and uh, th there are many filmmakers Girish Kasravalli, mm -hmm. uh, Girish Karnad and uh, MS Satyu mm -hmm. so uh, these are all uh, filmmakers that I grew up watching, uh, Satyajit Ray or, you know, uh, this, the Kurosawa. So I, I was always fascinated with such films and I was hooked on to the star movies uh, long ago, which used to play even Hollywood. Holly, uh, I was introduced to Hollywood by star movies. <laughs> I used to spend, spend my afternoons watching all kind of films there. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's been a great journey. That's, that's amazing. And uh, thank you so much on that note, uh, Balaji. It's been an absolute honor and pleasure chatting with you and wishing you nothing but the very best. And we look forward to many more movies and releases that, you know, in the years to come. So thank you so much for being a part of this conversation. And I'm sure many people are inspired by what you do. Thank you so much, Rashmi. Thank you so much. So lovely talking to you. Thank Bye. you.